Welcome to the Wine Math Series. My name is Erin Norton, and in this video we'll be going through some calculations for yeast inoculation. And this time we will be using metric units. There is another video in this series where I use uh, US standard units, so you can find that if that is more applicable uh, for the calculations you'd like to do. If you would like to skip ahead to the uh, skip the detailed explanation and head straight to an example. You can move ahead to the time points that are listed in the video description below. Let's get started. So when we're making wine, we ultimately want to take our juice and ferment it into wine. And typically the way that we're going to do that is by adding in an inoculum. And an inoculum is made up of several things. Uh, firstly, we are going to have some water and that is what we mix everything up in. Uh, and the main component is yeast. So the yeast are, is what's going to ferment sugar into ethanol. And typically we will also add in a yeast nutrient to keep the yeast nice and happy during the fermentation. So you will have packages for your yeast and your yeast nutrient, and from the package you can get uh, quite a bit of information on how to do the inoculation. And so from the package, some of the things that you will um, be able to, some of the pieces of information you'll be able to get are the temperature, what temperature should that water be at? Uh, also, what are the steps? Some products are very particular about um, the order of the steps uh, that you take. And lastly, the last piece of information that you can get is the in inoculation rate. And that is what we are going to be using today for our calculations. So those are things that you can find on the sides of your package for your uh, materials. So before we do any of these calculations, there's a couple pieces of information that you need to know. Some are from that package, like I just said, and others you'll find elsewhere. So what do we need to know? We need to know the inoculation rate. And that is what I just said you will get from the package. You need to know the volume of juice. And that you'll get from your records or from a tank. You need to know the amount of yeast that you need to add or the nutrient, the amount of nutrient you need to add. And that is what we are going to be focusing on to calculate. And the last thing you need to know is the amount of water that you need to make the inoculum up in. And that is also a calculation that we are going to do in this video. So for now, um, right now I'd like to just uh, give you a little primer on what the units are going to be for uh, this video. And so typically we are, when we're dealing in metric units, when we're talking about mass, we will be working in grams. Okay, and then when we're talking about volume, we will be working in liters. Just a note on uh, grams and liters. Sometimes you may see, so grams I usually denote with a G, liters a capital L. Uh, sometimes for, for grams you might see kilograms, okay? Kilo, one kilogram just equals a thousand grams. And uh, in terms of liters, uh, one that you might see a lot, and we're going to see on the next slide, one hectoliter equals 100 liters, okay? If you'd like to convert these in between uh, U.S. standard units, like ounces and pounds and gallons, uh, there's a couple of conversion factors I will show you at the end of this video that you'll need to do that, those calculations. Okay, so let's start off with a general calculation, and this is going to be one that you can keep in your back pocket and use um, whenever you want to, uh, whenever you have different batches. Um, and so we'll start with yeast. So the rate of inoculation is uh, typically, in terms of, um, of yeast, is typically 25 grams per hectoliter. 
Okay, and again, that's something that you're going to read off of the side of the package. The volume of juice in this case we are going to call x, number of liters, and the mass of yeast is something that we are going to calculate. And so conceptually, the way I would like you uh, to think about this is if we have a tank, okay, and it has one hectoliter, okay, one hectoliter or 100 liters, if, if our tank uh, or our volume of juice was this big, we would use 25 grams to do that inoculation. And so we are going to do these calculations to figure out based on a different volume, okay, X number of liters, what is the mass of the yeast. So it's proportional. The type of calculation we're going to be doing is a proportional type of calculation. Um, so let's go ahead and I will show you how I set these up. So we are going to be calculating mass of yeast. I always use a subscript here because I'm going to be calculating several masses in this video. Subscripts are always a good idea so that you know um, and you can come back to your notes to see what you calculated. So I also like to start in uh, my calculation side with a unit that is going to give me uh, the number, the value that I'm looking for. So in this case, grams is a mass unit. So I'm going to start with 25 grams per hectoliter, okay? Because that looks like in the end, I'm going to end up with grams right where I want it. Okay, and so we're going to multiply this by the number of liters, so x number of liters. Now hectoliters and liters are not the same thing, so we're going to have to take care of that. And what we can do is multiply this by one hectoliter is the same as 100 liters. Okay, and when I go through and I can uh, cancel out some of my units, and I am only canceling units here, I am not canceling any numbers, I will be left with the unit of grams in the end. So this will equal, when I, and when I compute the rest of the numbers, I will get 0 0.25 grams times x. Okay, so that's a general equation that you can use where x stands for the uh, volume of juice in liters. Um, and you can keep that and use that uh, whenever you want to. But let's go ahead and do an actual example uh, using an actual volume so you can see how this will work out. So again, our rate of inoculation is going to be 25 grams per hectoliter. Okay, our volume of juice, I'm going to choose uh, an arbitrary number here. How about 3,500 liters? And just so you realize, this equals 35 hectoliters. Okay, uh, the mass of yeast, again, we're not sure. We're going to calculate that. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got mass of yeast equals, start with our rate again, 25 grams per hectoliter. And we're going to multiply that. And you could go ahead and multiply that by 35 hectoliters if you knew that. Um, and if you were able to just, you know, look at 3,500 liters and realize that. But I'm going to go ahead and, and use the 3,500 liters to be consistent with my example from the previous slide. And I'm going to multiply that by the conversion factor for hectoliters and liters. So one hectoliter is 100 liters. Okay, so let's go through and clean up our units. And we should be left with grams in the end. And when we compute out the numbers, we will get 875 grams of yeast is what you would need for this uh, fermentation. And in case your scale measures in kilograms, don't forget that this would equal 8.875 kilograms. Okay. So let's move on and do an example using uh, or to calculate yeast nutrient. And so a common rate of inoculation for yeast nutrient is 30 grams per hectoliter. Now, I highly recommend that you read the package carefully for yeast and for nutrient to make sure that you have the correct rate of inoculation for your calculations. Okay, so the volume of juice, let's go ahead again and use that 3,500 liters. And then the mass of nutrient, we're not sure. 
This is a very similar calculation. We're going to set it up exactly the same way as we did with yeast. So we have the mass of nutrient, and because it's such a similar uh, calculation, this is where I really recommend using those subscripts to, to be able to come back to your notes and know uh, what it is that you added. So the mass of nutrient, we're going to start with our rate again, 30 grams per hectoliter. Multiply that by our volume, 3,500 liters, and correct the units, one hectoliter over 100 liters. Okay, we'll clean up our units, hectoliters and hectoliters, liters and liters, never cross out the numbers, just the units. And when we compute this out, we will get 1.050 kilograms. Now, I skipped a step there. Um, this would be 1,050 grams, which I just converted to kilograms automatically. Okay, lastly, we are going to calculate how much water we want uh, or we're going to need to make this inoculation, uh, this inoculum up in. So the rate of water uh, is typically on the yeast nutrient package, and it usually says you want to use 20 times the weight of the nutrient. Okay, so that means we are going to calculate a mass of water. And I know that you may want to calculate a volume. Typically liquids are easier to measure out in volume, and we will do that in a second. But we are going to first calculate out a mass, and then um, you can go ahead and weigh out a mass of water, that's totally fine. Or if you want to calculate it in volumes, I'll show you that. So the mass of water is going to be 20 times the rate of the um, the weight of the nutrient. So in this case we had, um, and this would be for I'm just going to remind us up here. This is for a 3,500 liters of juice. So we have 20 times the mass of the nutrient, which was 1.050 kilograms. And so we end up here with 21 kilograms of water. Again, if you want to go ahead and weigh that out, that is totally fine. Um, if you want to weigh out a volume, we are going to need the density, okay? And that's what I have over here. The nice thing when we're working in metric units is that the density of water is one kilogram per liter, okay? It makes the calculation quite, um, quite nice and simple. And I do want to point out though that this is a that this density value is only true at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the density does change slightly uh, if you have a cooler or a warmer temperature. And so just keep that in mind if you go to look up the density of water. Um, you will see that it varies and it probably varies slightly off of one kilogram per liter, but um, for all intents and purposes for wine inoculation, uh, it's okay to assume that one kilogram per liter. So let's, uh, and the other thing I want to point out here is that um, in order to calculate volume, we're going to use the density uh, equation. And so density equals mass over volume. You may remember that from high school. We're going to re rearrange this equation a little bit. So we have volume equals mass over density. And that's the equation we're going to use for this calculation. So volume of water equals the mass, so 21 kilograms, divided by the density, which is in this case one kilogram per liter. And that will give us 21 liters. So that's the volume of water that you're going to add your uh, yeast and your yeast nutrient into to get the inoculation started before pitching it into this 3,500 liters of juice. Okay, so before we uh, finish up, I just want to point out a couple of useful conversion factors in case you work in either US standard units or in metric units and you need to go back and forth based on maybe what's on your package or how you can weigh things out. So um, first up, we've got pounds and ounces. So one pound equals 16 ounces, and that equals 454 grams in metric units. Uh, don't forget this one hectoliter is the same as 100 liters. One gallon 
Uh, in U.S. standard units, one gallon equals 3.78 liters. Okay, and lastly here, the density of water uh, in U.S. standard units is 8.33 pounds per gallon and one kilogram per liter. Um, so some useful conversion factors to go between metric and U.S. standard units. Thanks for watching this wine math video. If you have any questions regarding the math or the general wine topic covered, feel free to reach out to us at wine at iastate.edu. Check out the other wine math videos to improve your math skills in the cellar. Cheers.